Hello everyone, this is Sanjay Sharma from AR Hub. I am a game developer. To know more about my projects, visit sanjaygng.in. Now let's get started with Unity. The version we'll be using is Unity 2018.3. Open Unity Hub. Click on this new tab. If you are using directly Unity 2018.3, there will be a plus sign on it. Just click on it. Create a new project. Name it. Choose the location. Or let it be default. The project we will be creating should be 3D. Click on create. I won't be doing it because I already have one. I'll be opening this project. After a minute, minute or so when a project is loaded, you will be on this screen. Now let us get started by creating something. But before that, we must know the interface of Unity. Unity basically comprises of four windows. This is the project window. This one. This is the hierarchy window and this is the inspector window and the fourth one here is the toolbar there is an additional window the game window we will be talk about it later so everything that's within the scene here in this 3d space of unity will be in the hierarchy window as you can see currently there are two things the directional light and main camera main camera to render our scene in the game view and directional light to give some light into the 3d space we can turn it off with this uncheck button. Now the inspector window. Every property of the object, game object, we generally call it game objects that are in the scene view, is being shown on the inspector window. For example, when the camera is selected, every property of the camera is shown on the inspector window. The transform and some other properties, which we'll talk about it later. The project window. Every file in our game or every file in our project we'll be working on is put up in the project window and every file that is currently in our scene is shown up in the hierarchy window well there is only one case when, uh, when the game object is in the scene is not in the scene and is shown in our hierarchy window when it is being disabled for example my main camera it is in my scene but when I disable it it is practically not in my scene and it is still in my hierarchy window as you can see that it is grayed out because actually it is not in the scene i will enable it again so this is the overview of our unity interface now let us get started by creating something right click in the hierarchy window 3d object cube now cube will be created now how to navigate in this 3d space for navigation in the 3d space hold right mouse button now just like you are playing a game, W, A, S and D, navigate it through W, S and D and there are two move buttons, Q and E, E for moving upwards, Q for moving downwards, W, A, S, D, E and Q, navigate through it and get yourself familiarized, familiarized with the Unity interface. So I will just use zoom in to my Q. Now for me, it seems a little small and I really don't like 111. So I will change the size of the cube and it will be done through the scale, the properties of my cube. So for the X, I will name it 5. Now it has become a cuboid. Y, 5. Now it has become something else. And Z, 5. Now it has become perfectly cube, but it is a little zoomed in. So I will click right mouse button, S to zoom out. Now the position is somewhere in this 3D space. I don't want a random position. I want it to be 0, 0, 0. So there is one method. Click on this settings button and reset. But as you can see, it has also resetted my scale. So that's the property of that reset button. Every position in every value in the transform will be resetted. So I will again make it 5, 5 and 5, the number which I like. And I will navigate to a WASD. Now sometimes you may feel that WAS and D are quite pretty slow so to make it fast just like in a first person shooter in a fps game we use shift for moving fast and in this unity also we use shift for moving fast so just click shift and you will move fast try it just try it and enjoy um, being in the first person mode so i have my queue and uh, i want to rename it i don't want to so i will make it my queue and click enter now it has renamed so let us try to get create a car so for the um, now i just showed you 
the WSD Q&E button while clicking on right mouse button. So now let us change the transform of the cube. By transform, I mean its position, its rotation, and its scale by key shortcuts. Now, generally there are these four buttons, Q, W, E, R. When I click on Q, it changes something like this, and I can see um, through my 3D view in my 3D space, nothing will change. When I click W, that I there are these three arrows, the 3D space arrows. This represents the X axis, Y, sorry, Y axis. The green one represents the Y axis as shown here. Blue one, the Z axis as shown here, and the red one, the is the X axis, which is not shown here because actually we are seeing it in 2D. So. So we'll change the transform, and uh, by transform I mean the position. So shift somewhere it, like this. I am left clicking on the axis and shifting it. You can see the position on the Z axis here is is altering live, and somewhere on the X axis and the Y axis. Try shifting a cube, and there's another button E. Well, with this I can rotate it. So with the left click I will rotate it. It's on X axis, another axis, and another axis to give it somewhere like a like a diamond. Oh, I don't know what is it, but somewhere a different shape. Okay, and now you can see that the position is already changed. Now the rotation is already and has also changed, and we change the scale in the first place only. Now, how to change the scale with using a shortcut? So there's another button that is R. Click on it, and it will change into scaling mode. Left click on any axis you want to expand and just like this okay and it, you can expand it so i have expanded my cube i will zoom out by right clicking and s but i really don't like these values i want it to be the default so i will once again click on this and reset and it is pretty small so i will make the scaling to five or oh, what happened does that actually became zero five so i will select the cube and click on once again w just navigate through in the first person mode so as i said you wanted to create a car so the car is not really a cuboid it's it's a it's not a cube it's a cuboid so i'll click on r and expand it somewhere like this compress it this way now it's it looked like a car a little bit i'll create um, my wheels 3d object cylinder so bring it here and Rotate it this way. Increase its scaling. Five, five, five. Well, wheels are not this big, you know. There's something improper. Click on R and compress it. W. And I want it to be below my car because wheels are always below your car, you know. Now we get in 3D space and you will see that it looks okay from one side, but actually it is not. So you need to view from four sides to actually ensure that the wheels are perfect for your car. The rotation is not perfect. I will make it a little perfect. Now I will just fast forward it to make my car. Now I have made my first wheel. I will call it wheel. Now I don't want to make every wheel like this. Well, there's a shortcut. I can just duplicate it. Control and D. Press Control and D, and you will have your wheel duplicate. I'll just shift it on the left side.
Now here is my car. Now, as you can see, it has many different entities and I really don't want my car to have these different entities. I want my car to be a single entity. Now, for that, I can do it like this. Right click, create empty game object. I'm rename it, rename it car. Now, control, press control and select each of your car entities drag it onto the onto your car empty game object and all these are now childs and you, on this empty game object is your parent game object now the one thing that i forgot was to reset its transform position now my car game object is a single entity and when i now move the whole car moves now let's get to prefabs for creating the prefab of this car, I will just left click and drag and down into my project. Now what is this? Now this car, the car I created has no physical presence. It was just in my scene. Now when I dragged it into my project window, now it is physically present on my disk and my hard disk. And when you will just go into the Windows Explorer, into the uh, project folder, and there will be a folder named Assets, and to the Assets, there will be a prefab named Car. And so it has its physical presence now. Now, what is the importance of creating a prefab? Well, when I want to create 100 cars, I can just drag and drop like this, like this. But for now, I don't want it, so I'll just delete it. And the, the relation of prefab and its instance is like a parenting relationship. The changes I will, be, I will make in prefab will be reflected back onto the car. But the changes I will make onto this instance of the car that is in the scene will not be reflected back in the prefab. Well, it's a one way relationship. This car in my scene depends on the prefab, but it's actually not fully dependent on it. I can alter the properties of this car. As you can see, I can change its size, x, scale, x, y, and z. And the prefab hasn't changed. The prefab still has that old car. But if I change something in the prefab, this car will be changed. You can try it on. For now, I'll have my car only. So the major thing that my car is missing is coloring. Now let us color our car. For it, I will just click on the car. Open my prefab. Well, I will color my prefab and you will see that the color will be reflected back onto the car. So just right click into your project window. Create material i will name it red because i will be making it a red color click on this albedo choose your required color click cancel and i will be creating another color material i'll name it yellow albedo choose your color uh, well i named it yellow so yes this one and then just drag and drop the colors onto your car and you will see that it has colored now you will see that my car is ready i'll get back to my scene by clicking this arrow and all of my changes in the prefab were reflected back onto my scene well that's good now I want you to create a street scene. It will have a road, it will have street lights, and it will have cars. And prefab the street lights, prefab the cars, and just drag and drop from a prefab. Well, I am just creating mine and I'll fast forward it, but I really want you to create it.
So my sample scene is ready and I will just put up my cars into my scene. Well, I've created one and it's okay. You can create as many cars as you want. So my car is really big. I will scale it down to 0.5. Now to apply this back to prefab, you will just have to click on overrides, apply all, and now my pref the, my properties are applied back to prefab. Now that's it for now. I really want you to create a street scene, put in up your, all your efforts, all your passion into creating this street scene. Well, I have just uh, made it uh, a temporary, but I have really uh, used the metallic colors for the street lights uh, and something uh, plasticky colors for my roads. Now you, you, you can see the difference. And I really want you to uh, just tweak the settings that you want. Don't um, be afraid of anything. Just tweak the settings and create your street scene. Put your love into it. Uh, create a beautiful street scene that you would. Uh, really want to work on and we'll see you in the next one